Hi, I'm Daniel Connard and this tutorial is part of our Edge Animate Online Week. If you're interested in this topic, you should check out our other videos on edgedocs.com. Today's episode is about building a simple sprite sheet animation in Edge Animate. You probably know sprite sheets from old school video games like Prince of Persia. At least you might be familiar with the principle. Using the laziness of the human eye, a sequence of slightly different images leads to the illusion of a movement, just like in a flipbook. Now let's see how we can use that in Edge Animate. So let me quickly show you how the animation will look like in the browser. So we've got this character coming in from the side, uh, changing the facial expression and then leaving the stage again. So this animation was built in Edge Animate and I will teach you how it's done. So this is the completed animation, but we want to start from scratch or pretty much from scratch because I already prepared the stage a little bit. We've got this uh, house on the left side, which is just a group of rectangles and one rectangle that will serve as the floor, as you can see here, just a gray rectangle. So native elements in Edge Animate can also be uh, used to create elements here or this case it's a div group so contained within a div box are the elements that serve as a house so that i can pretty much copy it and i just have to hold the alt button and then drag it over here and we've got a neat copy of the first house so we don't have to do it all over again as you can see here it's a copy of all the elements and um, so pretty simple here and uh, we might want to change the background color a little bit so that it's uh, more visible in the browser and also a lightly blue color for indicating that it's a sky i mean it's not like a really pretty design but um, i think it serves the purpose here so um, we want to introduce the sprite sheet now and this is what a sprite sheet looks like so we've got the character in different positions moving the arm and the legs, and then the facial expressions on the right side. So you see that the images just change slightly from one to another. So combined we've got the whole movement or the change of the facial expression, as you have seen in the uh, demo at the beginning. So we want to introduce these pictures into uh, our composition now and we use some sort of keyhole effect with the symbol so that only one of the images will be shown at a time so we can exchange the images and then thus create the movement. So first of all we have to create this keyhole. We draw a rectangle and uh, it has to feature the properties of the uh, character which is 200 pixels of width and 265 pixels of height and um, these are important because we want to fit uh, the keyhole for each image of the character and we convert it into a symbol and uh, call a character so that we know what we're dealing with here uh, we go into the symbol and delete the rectangle because we don't need the rectangle anymore and now it's crucial that you set the overflow to hidden because we don't want to, the other images to be visible, obviously. We only want to see one image at a time. So this way we can create this effect of movement or the flipbook effect. And uh, the autoplay will be set on auto so that the animation will start uh, as soon as the symbol is set on the stage. So uh, now we can include the image. Again, this uh, graphic material nicely done by Jackie Shapers, and um, she created this whole sprite sheet. Uh, thanks again for doing this. Serves so as a good example here. So if you want to know more about these characters, stay tuned for Ogachi. Mentioned it uh, probably before. Uh, it's an open source project that we're currently working on, so keep that in mind. So back to the sprite sheet animation, we have to set the auto transition mode off 
because we don't want transitions uh, transitions in between the images. We want to change the images straight and no stages in between the images. So that's really important here. Uh, next thing, so we set a keyframe. I don't know if you notice that we have set a keyframe for the first image and now we change the grid. So we make the grid visible first and then we can change the grid size. Apparently you can't see it. I selected it down there. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got the grid set to one per 10 seconds or 10 milliseconds, I guess it is. So one per 100 milliseconds. So that's right. Sorry for that. And um, we move now the playhead first and then the image to the next state. So it's better to type in the numbers manually here though, because Edge Animate sometimes rounds the numbers up and you don't see it in here. So just type them in to make it perfectly sure that the image is at the exact point. So since the width of the each character is 200 pixels, we have of course to move it 200 pixels to the left. And uh, we the keyframe is set automatically here, so we don't have to uh, change it again. So now we can go over to the next state, minus 400 pixels. Again, you see the uh, keyframe is uh, set automatically down here. So moving over to the next point in time, we can now go over to minus 600 pixels and you see a different version of the character or different movement here. Now we repeat this over and over again until we have all the states of the character contained in the different keyframes. So minus 1000 will be the next step. And again, moving it further to the left. So, it's a bit of a typing work here, but um, it's uh, it looks more annoying than it actually is. <laughs> so, I mean, the good thing is that the keyframes are set automatically so that you don't have to uh, check that as well every time. And um, now we're almost there. I mean, it's important to have so many states in between so that we have a fluent movement and now we've reached the point where the character faces the user and uh, we start with the facial expressions but we want this not to be directly after the walking sequence and you will know why in a second we just drag the keyframe manually over to the next state here so that's easy easily done and now you see here uh, the first image is not a walking image, so we move to the second state and now we introduce a label because we want to loop the walking sequence. And uh, this is where the walking sequence starts, so we label it walk. And now we move to one position on the grid behind the last image of the walking sequence over here and we can insert a trigger. So this will be like a command and you've got some presets here in Edge Animate which are pretty helpful. So we choose play from and we've got a number here. So that would already do, it would start from thousand, it's always milliseconds here, but we uh, introduce the label and I want you to uh, get to use labels. So uh, you just type in the string walk and so the symbol will play from the label that you set before. So once it reached the trigger point, it will start again from walk and go over and over again. And uh, so we've got a looped walking sequence already. But let's first, uh, oh, we can check that in browser. As you can see, doing some sort of moonwalking here, but uh, at least the walking sequence works pretty nice already. But let's first uh, finish the characters here or the facial expressions. So again, we do this procedure for all the states that we have. 
Moving over 200 pixels, we've got different facial expression here. And uh, again, 200 pixels. And as you can already see, we almost reached the final image or the final state. Just now, happy face. <laughs> it's a good thing to have this at the end, <laughs> I guess. So uh, what we do now is we again include labels for the different facial expressions. So this one would be smile. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you type in as a label as long as you remember uh, what you type in or what they mean. So uh, I think it's good to have, have them uh, labeled uh, according to what they actually stand for. So this one, yeah, we can pretty much say stop because it doesn't do anything, the character doesn't do anything there. So stop, walk, sad, and smile would be the labels that we've got here, um, which will be used in a, in a bit. So we've got the loop and we've got the different facial expressions with labels. And uh, I think we're pretty much done in the symbol. You can check again here, got all everything included. So now we can go back to the stage and start animating the whole process because we don't want this moonwalking, although it's pretty awesome. Uh, we want the character to get on the stage and uh, never mind if uh, if you've got the loopings, the loop of the uh, um, the walking sequence not included in the preview in Edge Animate. It's uh, it always shows all the different state states of the uh, um, of the symbol. So the symbol timeline will be played once, and that's it. So never mind there in the browser, it will look different as you have seen before. So we can now start creating the animation to get him onto the stage. So what we do here is use the pin. And uh, again, we, we now want the intermediate states. So uh, um, we've got everything enabled here. And uh, we move him first off the stage. And now we use the pin for the animation. So move the playhead to the right. And since we changed the grid, I think we have to go quite a bit here, quite a distance. And now we simply move him onto the stage, maybe a little bit further. And uh, we also want the background to move in the opposite direction. So we've got the feeling that this whole image moves with, along with the character a little bit. So we leave the pin enabled and just drag the houses a bit to the left. And uh, that's about it. That's the first animation. And we can see it in the browser that it's nicely done. And now again, you see that the walking sequence the loop walking sequence still runs because we haven't told him yet to stop walking. Just like Forrest Gump. <laughs> so just like Forrest, we have to call a stop action here. So good thing is that we have a playback command here so that we can use, uh, we can use these playback commands from the timeline in the stage to direct the timeline in the symbol. So we want him to stop at a certain position. And of course, we don't want him to stop at walk, but we want him to stop at the point stop. And once we introduce this playback command here, the animation in the symbol would simply stop at the label stop. So the character would face us. And we can do the same with the different facial expressions. So the playhead would jump to the position, for example, set. Then moving the playhead here and the symbol playhead should move to the position with the label talk.
and then again we can create some sort of lip movement with interchanging the talk state with the stop state so that the mouth opens and shuts again and uh, of course talking is not only open the mouth once and shutting it once so we have to copy paste these two uh, positions a couple of times and the it the effect is even better if you randomly change the space in between opening and shutting the mouth so putting the playhead here different positions on the grid but i think that should do for now so now we want him to leave the stage walking again so we first of course oh no we want him to smile of course shouldn't leave angry so smile a bit for the camera and then we want him to leave the stage so um of course first of all we have to introduce the walking sequence again so play from and the label walk so that you see here the animation of the walking sequence starts again and now we can animate the symbol of the stage so using the playhead and the pin and simply drag the whole symbol of the stage to the right and disabling the pin again that should be it as you can see now character enters the stage addresses the viewer talks a bit smiles and leaves the stage again and uh, yeah this is how you can simply build pretty simple though sprite sheet animations within edge animate of course there's room for a lot of more a lot more and we're still working on um, using this this technique for gaming engines and uh, if you're interested in this uh, stay tuned for more uh, visit edgedocs.com and edge comments and of course um, our ogachi open source library for gaming and character design uh, still under construction right now but uh, stay tuned for a lot of more things to come there as well and hope you enjoyed this episode we will still have some more features coming up and if you have anything questions or commands let us know